You can play Hogwarts Legacy in more than one way and it's likely you're not using enough some of its best skills. In this video we're going to cover even more crazy OP combos as well as a few things that will make your life a lot easier. And if you enjoyed this video at any point, a thumbs up on it would help a ton so let's dive right in. Now Hogwarts is a game of combos and usually opposite effects in it can react with one another in great ways. One really strong combo that can be done from quite early is using Levioso and Descendo to almost one-shot most of the enemies. Normally Levioso is used to control them up in the air while Descendo doesn't really do much damage on its own, but when you combine them this amplifies it even more and it truly becomes great. I've tested this on a lot of enemies on the high difficulty and with an endgame build like mine this means one-shotting them. I'm pretty sure that's because once you do cast Descendo on an enemy that's technically not on the ground, I believe this also adds some fall damage in the mix which might explain the much higher numbers. It's kinda like using the other control spells such as the Pulso to throw enemies off cliffs, except in this situation you don't have to depend on higher places, it's much quicker, easier and more efficient, plus the damage is just amazing. Descendo is also great on its own to keep enemies on the ground and avoid them from getting up. Like when fighting grab horns, it has the same effect as the Mandrake if you cast Descendo on it when it's trying to get up, giving you plenty of time to do other attacks as well. But there's more a lot later and there's an even stronger combo with the Glacius and Defendo, which is probably the best skill combo right now from all of the regular spells. If you freeze a target first and then immediately cast Defendo on it, you again amplify the damage, deal much higher numbers as you basically slash that target with this awesome spell. Glacius was already great at amplifying literally every single one of your other attacks once you do freeze a target, but Defendo just works the best with it in like 99% of the situations, though you will have to use it right away otherwise the frozen effect might wear off too quickly. Further adding a Maxima potion in the mix that I also covered in previous videos will pretty much double the damage of the Amplified Defendo and you can easily pull off 10k for example even if it's a non-crit. From my testing on the high difficulty it seems that this setup is also best on the large enemies like the Armored Trolls and the Arachnid Bosses since you can maximize the damage on that Defendo. It's likely still not going to crit but the white damage numbers are still going to be higher than Confringo or Bombarda comparatively. I also tested the Ice from Glacius plus the Confringo which was significantly weaker against these larger targets but still nonetheless amazing against the normal sized enemies since technically this combo is still overkill. Meanwhile combining Glacius with Bombarda resulted in a much higher damage than this, slightly behind the Defendo but still quite useful and a bit more reliable nonetheless. Defendo has this issue where it kinda tends to like slash into the ground and completely avoid hitting the target but Bombarda doesn't have that issue so if you have problems with Defendo Bombarda can be an amazing compromise. But it makes sense, it's also because Confringo Mastery is slightly weaker than Bombarda when it comes to single target damage, so maybe that's it. That being said, there's other really cool interactions to keep in mind and certain enemies as well as states can have other big weaknesses that can result in getting them one-shotted even with a very weak build. For example, when you see spiders digging into the ground for their following attacks, if you use Levioso on them you essentially break them in half as you pull them out of the ground which also instantly kills them regardless how much HP they have left or how strong your spells are. Similarly, if you see a Dugbog, which are these otherwise very tanky frog-like creatures using its tongue to attack you, if you cast Levioso on the tongue just as it's charging its attack, you can lift it up for a few seconds, which you can then completely cut off with Defendo and one-shot them no matter what. As a matter of fact, it's a one-shot guarantee if you do this setup and there's even like challenge tracks to do this on these enemies. I find these really awesome but there is a lot more of course including when you cause trolls to charge into walls or do anything else to stun them. If you see them drop on their knees either from hitting a wall or for example from using stupefy, casting any damage spell against it gets a massive amplify. For example Bombarda is an amazing one that deals like 10k plus and you can even combine this with a combo from Glacius plus Defendo to do like 16k if you want to. It's totally viable to like just stack all of these bonuses on top of each other. 
And speaking of stacking a lot of buffs, there's one OP setup that's probably the best in the entire game as it literally doesn't even require you to use your wand at all. And I will have to give a huge shout out to Ragnar Theo for actually telling me about the Chinese chomping cabbages. He actually covered this more extensively in his video, so totally check that out and also subscribe to his channel as he also covers some awesome Hogwarts Legacy content. Now, on its own, the cabbage is quite unimpressive, though if you add just two upgrades in the mix, you can make it absolutely insane. The first thing you'll want to get is the fertilizer perk in the Room of Requirement trait line, which lets you throw two cabbages at the same time instead of just one at no additional cost. On top of these, you'll also want to get either the fangs or the herbology traits that you get randomly from the collection chests that you find inside the random bandit camps that spawn around the open world. Preferably rank 3 for the high difficulty and especially so on like the higher level enemies but early levels also work great too. So if you go with a full build that focuses on the traits that buff your plant damage the result is quite insane and these cabbages will deal up to 6 or even 8k damage per bite against certain enemies or well most of the enemies. It's like every single non-crit attack that they do feels like some of your strongest combos except that they do it every second without stop. You can throw up to 3 of these at the same time, so with the fertilizer trait that means 6 cabbages in total which will absolutely eradicate everything on the battlefield in just seconds. I tested this against these armored trolls on the high difficulty and this is for example the damage with my fully maxed out legendary build without the trades for the plant damage which barely did any damage at all, only around 350. But then when I fully invested the fang trades, this already increased the damage by at least 5 times per bite from around 350 to over 1500 and this was with the same armor set, same number of upgrades, the only difference was that I switched to those traits. And then when I finally replaced the fangs with the herbology traits also rank 3, this further doubled that from 1500 to almost 3000. So that was on pretty much every single hit which makes me believe that the herbology trait is the best by far in this situation. Plus, this is also going to benefit your other plants, such as the tentaculi, which shoot these like poison darts from afar. You can even upgrade their ranged attacks to also break enemy shields, which the cabbages cannot, and nor do they have one of these upgrades in the skill tree, so it's totally useful to combine them both. And no, it's not going to work with the maxima potion, but I don't even think you need it, since you're going to just wreck everything. Of course, this build is going to be reliant on a few things, which is why it's nice to automate your room of requirement, starting with the material refiner. Both this as well as the rest of the things that I'm about to show you can be bought from this vendor back in Hogsmeade. So this will create 10 moonstones every 10 minutes and you can place up to 3 refiners in total, which means every time you hit the room of requirement you can grab 30 moonstones quickly and these will definitely add up. Also, the hopping pots are again great, you can place a max of 3 and they'll give you a random potion every 12 minutes. That is why I place them all at the entrance so that I can quickly grab everything. It's also smart to get the chopping station, another automated process that gives you random plants every 10 minutes and trust me, these are going to be useful in no time. And obviously, finally, the medium 3 pot table so that you can place down the chopping cabbages. I just placed down around 5 or 6 of these and this give me way more than I need to carry at every single time. It's like 12 minutes for one cabbage so every time you come back at the room you can always grab them and then just go out in the wild and use them. It's actually an awesome setup, totally check it out. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.